Are you tired of feeling defeated, discouraged, and overwhelmed in life? Do you ever wonder why some people seem to overcome obstacles effortlessly while others struggle? The answer is simple attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude in life. It is the lens through which you view the world, and it shapes your experiences. In this powerful sermon, you will learn how your attitude makes all the difference in achieving success, happiness, and fulfillment. People with the right attitude do nearly impossible things. Your attitude makes all the difference in every circumstance in your life. Your attitude helps you decide whether it's a blessing or a burden. Whether your challenge is inspiring you to believe God for more or if it overwhelms you and you're frustrated by your circumstance, your attitude is what you use to determine whether or not you're going to give God the praise and the thanks that he's worthy of, or if you're going to complain to everybody you meet about what you're lacking in your life. The Bible says that everything that has breath should praise the Lord. Nowhere in the Bible do we read that every person with a complaint is supposed to praise the Lord. Why? Because complaining cancels out the power of praise. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. You cannot make the difference that God wants you to make unless you have the right attitude and your attitude is determined by these three things. 1. The amount of gratitude that you have in your heart. 2. The amount of time that you spend praising God. 3. The amount of time spent in prayer. The Bible says to always be happy, keep on praying, and never give up. Always be thankful for what you have. This is what God wants us to do. Dear Heavenly Father, help us obey what your word says. Help us to remember all the good things you have done for us. Thank you for the power we have when we pray in Jesus' name. The more grateful you are, the better your attitude will be. Have you ever seen somebody receive a blessing but they're not grateful for it? They complain about how blessed they're not, even though they are blessed. When the alarm clock rings tomorrow morning, be thankful that you can hear it. Think about it this way, there are lots of people who would love to wake up tomorrow but they will not. The Bible says that today is a special day, and we should be happy about it. Rejoicing is something you do because you choose to, not because of what's going on in your life. It has everything to do with your attitude, which is based on how thankful you are. So, when you're driving to work and things aren't going the way you want, remember to be grateful for the job you have. There are people who are working and they're not thankful for their job. They have a description called unemployed because you will not keep what you do not appreciate. The Bible says that we live in Him, we move in Him, and we have our being in Him. Recognize that it is the Lord who gives you the power to get wealth. The Bible didn't say that God's going to give you wealth, but that He would give you the power to get wealth. So how did He give you that power? Through work. The New Testament says that he who does not work should not eat. That literally means that your work is a sacrifice of praise to God. So, when you go to work, don't complain about what you have to do today. And don't worry about all of the things that might happen. Instead, say thank you to God for the job. Thank God that you have the strength to do it. Thank God for your good health. And thank God for the opportunity to be a part of His perfect plan for your life, no matter where you are today or what you're facing. Remember, there are millions of people in this world who would love to trade places with you. So even if things seem bad, somebody else is always worse off than you are. Do what King David said, be thankful to him and bless his name. Paul said it this way in 1 Thessalonians, rejoice always. That means being happy in the good times, the bad times, and even the terrible times. How many of you ever went through a bad time? How many of you know there's a difference between bad and terrible? Rejoice always. Be thankful unto him. We should be thankful to God for everything he has done for us. We should praise him every day. We should be thankful for our salvation and for his forgiveness. Every time we see the sun rise, we should be thankful to him. We should also be thankful when we remember his faithfulness in the past, present, and future. If you realize that God's grace is stronger than your sin and that it covers all of your imperfections, you should be thankful to him and bless his name every time he provides for you, heals you, or protects you. You should also be thankful when you consider the power that you have through the authority of his word. And finally, when you know that he inhabits the praises of his people, be thankful unto him and bless his name. 
prayer changes your atmosphere because the Bible says that the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. David was a man after God's own heart because he knew how to praise God. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people and the Bible tells us that he gives his angels charge over us. This is an everyday promise, but when you're going through tough times and you continuously praise God, you send a personal invitation to the throne room. When you praise God, it is like inviting him to show himself. He uses praise to demonstrate his power. For example, in the Bible in the New Testament in the book of Acts, there are two stories about when people got beaten and put in jail because they were doing what God wanted them to do. They were telling people about Jesus, the gospel, and going into every land. Even though they were being treated unfairly, they did not write a letter to the ACLU or have a press conference. Instead, they praised God according to the word of God. The Bible says that, even though they were in chains and in a dark dungeon, the believers who were persecuted because of their faithfulness started singing and praising God. They knew that God was with them, and they believed that everything would be all right. The Bible then says that what happened next was amazing, heaven came down to earth and the prison walls began shaking. The prisoners and the jailer thought it was an earthquake, but it was really God sending his children a message. No matter what kind of trouble you're in, if you praise God, heaven will invade your circumstance and set you free. The Bible tells us that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In fact, God himself said I am the Lord, I do not change. So, because God is so consistent and constant, it doesn't matter what circumstances in your life are changing. They change from day to day, hour to hour, and minute to minute. But because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever you can praise him based on what you've seen in the past. You can thank him for what you're believing for right now. If he's provided for you in the past, he'll provide for you today. If God has healed you in the past, he will heal you today. If God has provided for you in the past, he will provide for you today. He is still a way maker and a mountain mover. He still has a plan for you. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is the God who is faithful from generation to generation, so we should be thankful unto him and bless his name. When you live with a grateful heart, it will become natural for you to praise God. This is what Paul had in mind when he told the church to pray without ceasing. Prayer is one of the most powerful gifts that God has given us, but we often don't take advantage of it. The New Testament church was built on prayer. So why don't we pray more often? One reason is because we don't understand what prayer is. Prayer is not something you recite before bedtime or a part of a ritual. It's not a chore on your to-do list that you need to check off like brushing your teeth. You need to recognize that prayer is a privilege. If you think about it, you're lucky. Not everyone has what you have. You can talk to God anytime, anywhere. In the Bible, it wasn't like that for the Israelites. They had to go to a specific place at a specific time to talk to God. And there were rules about how they could talk to him. But when Jesus came and died for us, we can have a relationship with God anytime we want. The book of Hebrews says that we have a great high priest who has conquered death and hell. This high priest is seated at the right hand of God the Father. This high priest took the veil in the temple and tore it from top to bottom. Since we have this high priest, all we need to do to talk with the maker of heaven and earth is say in the mighty name of Jesus. Then we will be before the throne anytime we need him. We can call on him and he will answer us and show us great and mighty things that we know not any time we're overwhelmed. We can call on him and he'll give us peace that surpasses understanding any time we're in battle. We can call on him and he'll be the glory and lifter of our head any time we're sick. He will heal us. The Bible says to pray without ceasing, which means to do it so often that you don't even realize you're doing it. It should become part of who you are. This is important because it helps you build a close relationship with God and hear his voice when others cannot. When it comes to hearing from God, people often say that they just want to know what God wants them to do. But if you haven't asked him, then how will you know? You've got to learn how to hear his voice, and the only way you can do that is by praying without ceasing. Don't just try it once in a while, do it on a regular basis. Your attitude makes the difference. You will not remember what you do not appreciate, but what you appreciate, you will share with others. 
we all have different things that we appreciate and the more we appreciate them, the more we want to tell other people about them because we want those people to participate in what we appreciate. The problem is that whenever it comes to the things of God and how good God has been, when somebody asks if we appreciate Him, we might be intimidated. But the Bible says that we are the bride of Christ, which makes Christ our groom. That's the love relationship we should have with Him. The Bible calls it boasting in the Lord. It's something that because of His goodness in our life, we should be willing to do all day long. You should go to work and tell people about Jesus. You should go to school and tell your friends about Jesus. Tell them all about how awesome Jesus is because there's nothing else worth sharing that can compare to how amazing Jesus is. Isaiah sees the Lord seated on the throne and hears the Lord say, Who will go for us? Isaiah replies, Here am I. Send me. If God hasn't changed, then the same question he asked of Isaiah is the same question he's asking you today. He doesn't need you to have all the gifts and talents in the world, he just needs you to be willing to say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Thank you for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel to help us bring you more Word of God to the world. Here is another sermon you will love. Thank you, and God bless you.